Hello, I'm Maribel Lopez, the founder of Lopez Research, and I'm really excited to be here today with Deepu Tala of NVIDIA. Hello, Deepu. Maribel, how are you? Glad to be here today. Great. So we're here to talk about the edge, and there are so many definitions of edge computing. It goes from everything from what could be considered the last mile telco data center, all the way down to a smartphone or a self-driving car, and there are spots in between. So with such a wide definition of the edge, and with so much change that's happened in artificial intelligence, what are you seeing as the requirements for an edge computing stack today? Day. Yeah, sure. So, so we've in the last uh, three years, we've seen uh, industries such as uh, manufacturing, retail, healthcare, transportation, and many others infusing their technology with artificial intelligence, primarily for uh, efficiency improvements and productivity improvements, right? And it turns out that majority of that AI today is being done in the cloud. Now we're starting to see the trend of that computing moving from being exclusively in the cloud to also running at the edge. And we talk about edge AI, which is essentially the fusion of artificial intelligence and IoT. Most people associate that with you know, AI running on the device, for example, a phone or in a robot or in a car. And of course that is happening for sure. But also it turns out there's another big use case, which is bringing the capability of the cloud or the data center close to the edge at or near the device. So, so that, that essentially is what's really, you know, transforming many different uh, industries today. I, I love the way you put that because I think that is the real difference is pulling the data center closer to where the data is being generated and being able to do some analysis on that real time, maybe not ship all that data back to the cloud, as you mentioned. Uh, so that requires a lot of things. You know, It requires some changes in thinking about what we might've had as cloud center uh, computing with GPUs to maybe a different style of GPU. It might even have some changes in how we think about networking. How do you at NVIDIA see those changes? Mm -hmm. So if you think about why do you want to move computing from just being in the cloud to also at the edge, there are three top reasons, right? The first one is uh, costs. Uh, the second reason is latency. And then the third reason is that there's some privacy and regulations in, in some industries where they don't want to send data to a public cloud. Now, now why, why do we actually in the first place send data to the cloud? Because as you know, much of the intelligence that we derive today happens from the fusion of many different sensor technologies, whether it's cameras, whether it is audio sensors, whether it is you know, um, LIDAR, radar, and so on and so forth. So as you have all of these sensors that are constantly generating data, we have you know, hundreds of billions, if not trillions of these sensors eventually in the future that all across you know, in manufacturing, in, in retail, in healthcare, and you know, pretty much every building, right? So, so when we you know, trying to process all the data, instead of sending it to the cloud, what if you had a, your own cloud pretty much on premise at the edge? And that's really, you know, that's really what's happening today. And you want to bring the capability of the cloud to the edge and do that sensor aggregation in both time and space. And that allows you to really get the next level of, uh, you know, intelligence and process at the edge. So when you say in time and space, can you give me an example of what you mean by that? Yeah, so think about a traffic intersection. You want to regulate the flow of traffic. Now at a traffic inter intersection, we're gonna have multiple cameras, right? In different directions. And, and so you have to combine all those cameras in space, number one. And number two, you also come, have to combine each of those sensors in time because what's happened, say 15, 30 seconds ago is going to be relevant to what's going to happen now and what's going to happen in the next 30 seconds. So you have to do all of that fusion. Now, all of the fusion is not possible to do it on the camera itself because that camera doesn't know what else is happening on the other camera, for example. So that's the reason why, you know, today we send the data to the cloud, but now we are starting to see some of that capability come to the edge, meaning add, you know, pretty close uh, to the edge. That, that makes a lot of sense to me. And I think one of the things that when we think about the cloud, 
the cloud has evolved quite a bit. You know, we started with the cloud as infrastructure, and then increasingly we started to add different platform software services on top of that. And I would imagine that as we move to the edge, we're talking about a similar thing. So it seems like software is taking a broader role. Uh, what do you think is important in an AI edge platform as it pertains to software? Yeah, so I think there is uh, three layers. The first layer, we call it the underlying hardware architecture itself, right? So you have to be able to process enormous amounts of data and, and do a lot of artificial intelligence algorithms. So we've designed our GPUs, NVIDIA GPUs, in the last five years, we've increasingly added more capability to process these machine learning and deep learning and other sorts of uh, you know, AI capabilities uh, in our GPUs. And incidentally, the same GPUs that are powering the you know, data center and supercomputers, we have the same architecture that comes down all the way to uh, edge computing. So we've added uh, Tensor Cores, which is we are on our third generation with our Ampere GPUs that allows us to run AI very, very fast and effectively, number one. Now, the other piece of the hardware that's also increasingly becoming important is networking. Actually, if you take a look at the data centers today, you know we, have, we see some wonderful pictures in the front of the data center, but actually if you go back and take a look at it, you end up seeing lots of cables and cables and cables, right? So miles of cables, literally, right? And you add them all up. So, and the reason why networking is becoming important is because you have data that's coming in from high data rate, high throughput, and lots of sensors that's coming in. So you want to be able to process the data, and more importantly, you want to process the data in a secure, encrypted manner. So if you are doing that on your traditional system processor or the CPU, you're just bogging down the compute system. So network processing has become you know, very, very important in order to uh, you know, run it in a secure and effective manner. So if you look at today's data centers, there's high performance CPU, there's high performance GPUs, there's high performance networking. So we are starting to see that same thing now being brought to the edge. And recently, you know, with our EGX line of products, NVIDIA, we announced the fusion of our latest GPU, the Ampere uh, series, plus Mellanox networking. So that's the first layer. So we have great hardware that is designed. Now you talked about software. Now there's two pieces of the software. The first piece of the software is, look, we are trying to bring the cloud to the edge, right? So what's so great about the cloud? Actually, the things that are great about the cloud is you can update your AI anytime, right? I mean, there's zero downtime effectively. You don't, you know, you're not never worried about that. And you're constantly updating AI applications. When you deploy these AI applications into all of these devices, into agriculture and manufacturing, these devices are going to be in the field for, you know, decades in some cases. And, and you want them to be getting better and better. So your software stack needs to be designed to be cloud native. And that's the number two that we're doing is, is you know, essentially bringing all that software capability that you have, the flexibility you have in the cloud, can you bring that to the edge? And then that's the story that we are you know, uh, building towards, bring the cloud capability, cloud native stack into the edge. Now, I know um, there are quite a bit of various technologies that we've looked at. We've talked about CPUs, we've talked about GPUs, we've talked about TPUs. Uh, there's lots of different types of processing units. And I know there's always been this tussle of, you know, GPU being high performance for training, but being considered uh, costly and maybe overkill for something like inference. Are we seeing any changes as we move into edge AI around that? Yeah, I mean, I think the edge AI is, is so broad, there's many different uh, use cases. And, and it turns out with our GPUs, you know, when we started, of course, the conventional wisdom was they were great for training and only training, but, but we have proven in the last couple of years that GPUs are great for inferencing. And the reason for that is, uh, first of all, we've added all the tensor code capability, which essentially what you find in deep learning accelerators or other, you know, uh, other, other hardware accelerators. So we've added all that, but the key is, we kept the programmability, the software programmability. And then, and then again, as you mentioned earlier, hardware is of course an important piece of it, but really what you know really makes it you know click in the end is all the software on top. So we've added this software stack, the secure software stack called the EGX, which essentially manages all these devices. And then that's all that's done so far is still just got you the infrastructure, if you will, right? The ability to run the application. So but still you got to run the applications. So we have created vertical application frameworks for different industries, such as we have a platform called Metropolis that we focus on for smart cities, which is all about processing, uh, you know, video cameras that are, you know, hundreds and thousands of camera feeds that are kind of streaming all, all, all over the world. 
Uh, if we have a platform uh, that we're working on called Clara for, for medical healthcare uh, and a lot of different use cases, AI use cases in healthcare. We have a platform called Isaac that we focus on for robotics applications. And then we have a few others that, you know, Jarvis for conversational AI, uh, where a lot of the, you know, interaction between human and machine is not just camera, right? It's a lot of it is uh, uh, audio, speech, uh, speech and natural language processing. So conversational AI. So, so really at the end of the day, you know, uh, companies, industries are looking for solutions. And, 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 and so in order to do that, you have to provide a high performance computing platform, which includes uh, you know, the core software and also the application frameworks to accelerate the applications. I love where you're going with this because I think you mentioned this concept of solutions and I think we started with AI and edge as a very broad horizontal thing, but to really make it sort of sing for organizations, it has to be tailored to the types of use cases that they're looking at. And, you know, you actually work with a wide range of companies and I thought it might be nice if you could share a couple of examples of the different types of things that you see people doing in AI and your client base today. Yeah, fantastic. So, so let me give you a couple of examples, especially in the times that we are in right now, right? I'll give you one example in healthcare and I'll yes. give you another example in uh, retail next. So healthcare, you know, given, given you know, the, the difficult situation that we're all facing now with COVID-19, of course, uh, you know, it's become very difficult where, you know, touch is not necessarily the greatest thing, right? Social distancing is important. So hospitals, mm -hmm. we're working with many, many companies in hospitals and, and you know, and many, many startups for hospitals. Uh, so we recently announced this uh, platform called Clara Guardian, which is essentially a fusion of two main technologies. One is intelligent video analytics, and the other one is conversational AI. So if you think about social distancing, uh, you know you want to know uh, how many people are entering the hospital from multiple doors, right? There's typically more than one entrance, so you have cameras all over. So so you are able to do people counting. You're able to do you know uh, flow analysis as to if, if they are you know congregating in a certain spot, if there are hot spots. And also, you know, in the case of hospital, you know, specific areas in the hospital, you know, they're washing their hands, are they, you know, uh, so, so those kind of, and also in a patient room, if the patient, uh, you know, for example, is, is uh, falling off the bed. Uh, so you can do those kind of analytics. So that's one. Number two is, so we have this conversational AI. So now you can put a speaker and a microphone near every patient bed and, and the patient can basically have a conversation with, uh, you know, can mention something and then AI can, you know, tr transform that, do, you know, speech recognition, do natural language processing, and then, uh, you know, call a nurse, for example. So, so mm -hmm. these, you know, we are working with many different startups. So hospitals are the number one site for it. But of course, now you can imagine that same technology now can be deployed into other buildings as we try to return back to, to work. So it's ability to process lots of, uh, you know, video and also fusing that with conversational AI. So that's one use case we are seeing a lot of uh, lot of adoption, especially in the last uh, four or five months. Uh, the second one is in, in in retail. In retail, similar things exist, right? So, for example, you know, you know, self checkout has become you know quite quite popular uh, recently, and and so in order to do when you're doing self checkout, but also in a retail store, besides doing self checkout, you want to do inventory management, right? You want to understand, uh, you know, the other day, you know, a couple of months ago, I was going to a Home Depot. Uh, to buy something to you know to my wife asked me to get me something to you know clean up and 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 then we i saw somebody there at the front of the entrance basically with a clicker uh you know counting the number of people going in and they, you know making sure that because you want to be safe so they want to keep the number of people that are getting into the building to be restricted now as we go back to work imagine in retail stores imagine other buildings how are you going to be able to do all of that so, so again it, it, you know, artificial intelligence and edge computing will, will definitely come into the picture. So we're starting to see these uh, move from, you know, last year, I would say they were mostly in the lab, but now this year we're starting to see them being uh, deployed uh, in, in, in several. And I think soon we'll start to see them being deployed at scale. I think one of the most exciting things about edge AI, edge AI right now is this concept that you can start with one use case and then you layer use cases. 
So you were talking about vision and conversation, right? So you were talking about uh, self-checkout and inventory. So it's one of those things that once you get into the process, there's sort of endless ways that you can take it to improve insight in the organization. And then there are also some real sexy things that we're starting to see happen in AI too. And I know that you guys have done a lot with automotive, and I think that they're pretty bleeding edge use cases as far as AI use cases go. But I thought maybe you could share a little bit about how you see the automotive landscape using AI. Sure. So I think when, when, when we talk about AI and automotive, the first thing that comes to people's mind, of course, is the self-driving car, whether it's uh, you know partially autonomous or eventually getting to be more and more autonomous, right? That's the first thing that, that comes into mind. And of course, AI is very central to that with respect to uh, doing all the you know perception and 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 route planning, and and an automotive is a classic example of multi-sensor fusion, right? So we've got several cameras in all directions. We've got lidar, we've got radar, and then in the car, uh, there's also probably some you know increasingly some some microphones and speakers that are also being put into place. So that's that's happening, um, and 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 you know we, we are seeing increasingly more amount of autonomy come into the picture. But it turns out there's a lot more AI being applied in automotive industry beyond, of course, the car itself. Number one, uh, we have to actually create those that AI that's running in the car and that needs to be updated. So it requires an enormous supercomputing capability, enormous you know amount of data that needs to be collected and trained and 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 then you know deployed into the car. And that's a continuous process that's going on and on. So there's a lot of AI work that's happening in in the creation of the AI that goes into the car. Number one. Uh, number two, uh, there's not enough testing that you can do really in the physical world when you put that AI in the car. So this is the answer is doing that in simulation, virtual reality, right? And it and it stands to reason that we'll probably simulate two, three, four orders of magnitude, so thousand or ten thousand times more number of miles in simulation uh, because it's more cost effective. You can do you know a lot more coverage and you can do it a lot faster because you can parallelize many different things. So we're increasingly seeing simulation. Uh, being used quite a bit, and Nvidia is right in the smack in the middle of it because you know we we started off as a graphics company, and of course that 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 speaks to our forte of you know bringing real realistic mm. uh, environment to in order to simulate you know simulate the the worlds around us. Uh, so that's the second part. Uh, the third part, actually, as it turns out, is automotive also has you know a lot of manufacturing associated with it. You know you have to build these cars, and that's a, happens to be an extremely complicated process uh, as as you have. Uh, thousands, hundreds, or tens of thousands of parts that are coming into a factory and, and, and in a warehouse, essentially as you're trying to manufacture it. And, and we are working on that as well with respect to you know uh, warehouse robots and you know optical inspection for for defects and 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 pick and place robots. And and recently, uh, you know, we've announced this partnership with uh, BMW at, at GTC back in back in May of this year, where where we are partnering with them to automate the flow of this manufacturing you know warehouse using all of these technologies in AI. So I think automotive is a fantastic example of where it's happening from end to end, as you say, from training, creation of the networks, high performance computing, to simulation, to manufacturing, warehouses, robotics, to of course, in the end, the self-driving car itself. So it seems like we've got everything from uh, a very simple uh, camera use case that could be extended all the way into self-driving. So obviously a wide range of what we're looking at with Edge AI that we're really excited about. Any other advanced use cases that you'd like to share with the audience or what you see is coming next in the future of AI? Yeah, I think uh, interesting thing about all of this is we're still at the very early stages of this deployment, right? So we, are, you know, a year or two ago we focused on one domain. It was maybe you know just image classification, you know, camera sensors. Now we are starting to see uh, the you know the, the the fusion of multiple domains like like you know uh, image, video, and conversational AI. And guess well, next where are we going? I mean, five G is coming, right? And you know, five G is going to be you know so important for all of this edge AI and IoT applications. And 5G is going to be pretty, uh, pretty broadly deployed, and and the architecture of 5G also tends to be pretty, uh, pretty diverging. Meaning, it's going to run in small data centers. Going to run a 5G stack might run on the appliance itself, close to the, uh, close to the, uh, um, you know, the factory itself or in the factory itself. So, so we're going to start seeing the fusion of multiple domains, as I mentioned, from conversational AI to uh, image processing to robotics to then add 5G on top of that. Wouldn't it be nice to see you know all of those come uh, together and work in a seamless uh, manner? 
Well, I look forward to seeing what we can create with all these great new AI technologies. Deepu, thank you so much for your time. My beloved, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much.